Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to Five Questions With. Last week, we had some amazing guests on the show, and boy, did we deep dive into their worlds. But here's the best part. We also uncovered their fun and playful sides. Our host, Scott Fullerton, has a treat for you today. You see, Five Questions isn't just about serious stuff. We like to keep it light and quirky, too. We ask questions that let our guests show their wonderfully unique and playful sides. Imagine this. What would they do if they woke up as a squirrel one day? Or what's their favorite ice cream flavor that describes their personality? It's all about bringing out their hidden quirks and having a blast along the way. We believe that even the most successful and accomplished individuals have a fun side and we're here to celebrate that. So get ready to witness the fun and playful side of our extraordinary guests. You'll laugh, you'll smile, and you might just discover a thing or two about them that you never knew. So sit back, grab a drink, and get ready for the show. If it's Tuesday, it's time for five questions with. I am so lucky to have back in studio Steve Matthew and Cody, the lead actors of the new film All Kinds of Love, available on streaming and video on demand today. Guys, welcome back to the show. How are you? Good. Hi. <laughs> we had an amazing interview last week. If you missed it, be sure to check the link below. We're going to play a little five questions. Are you guys ready? Ready. Yes. Yeah. All right. Question number one. We talked about in the interview, absolutely perfect casting and character portrayal on this. Steve, you had a big part to do with that. On a scale of one to, I need a therapist. How emotionally attached do you get to your characters while filming? Matthew? <laughs> I would say close to, I need a therapist. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Steven? Uh, for me, yes, I got really attached to Josh, so I would give it in the 7-8 range. It was very strange, though, because in the movie, we are divorced, and in real life, we're married, so I had to keep playing that in the head of like, no, wait, we're still married. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hopefully no awkward pillow talk at the end of a long day. That's <laughs> All right, and Cody, what about you? I'd say five. Um, and yeah, I was really sad when I had to part with Conrad and the movie and everyone. And because, yeah, we were all just a family. So it was sad, like, parting with all of that. <laughs> I bet. All right, Matthew, if, uh, if we were to make an all kinds of love cocktail, what would be in it and what would you call it? <laughs> I guess I would call it um uh i would call it well it would it would have to have some sort of vodka in it so maybe maybe a you know maybe a vodka martini sort of drink and i would call it a cock i mean conrad <laughs> <laughs> i love that that's a great answer all right and steve if your three characters found yourselves in a zombie apocalypse how would each of them survive and who would survive longest? Oh, well, first of all, Conrad is not going to survive. So he's <laughs> out. He's just out. So then it, becomes, then it becomes Josh saving the day and getting Max through. So we make it to the end, but clearly on my shoulders. <laughs> I like it. Cody, what's, uh, I mean, you're still relatively new to the business. What's the strangest direction you've ever had for a director or or vice versa? What's kind of the strangest scene you've ever felt you had to play out? Direction? Um, I don't know. I remember, like, we had to eat food. Well, it wasn't, like, cooked food. And we had to, like... Was it ramen or I don't know what it was, but it wasn't cooked well. And I'm like, I can't eat this. So it was just like pretending to eat uncooked food. I was like, okay, I'll work with this. <laughs> but you handled the cookie spoon deftly, my friend. You did very well. So yeah, I think I think broke that. <laughs> That's right, yeah. A few Big times it seemed like. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, and last question, number five here. We're going into spooky season here on Left of Straight Podcast. I mean, Cody, you have the boatyard coming up, and Matt and Steven, you guys worked on Devil's Path. Tell me, what's your favorite scary movie? Or if you're not into that, what's your favorite Halloween costume you've had in the past? Matthew? For me, I think, gosh, my favorite scary movie, maybe the original Halloween. 
scary as f yes yeah. i agree 100 percent. Steve, uh, for me it's uh when a stranger calls i love that movie Ooh, i don't think i've seen that one. Oh, check it out it's a good one it's spooky cody what about you yeah i love horror movies like i love jordan peele because they're just such yeah. fun horror movies with good stories so like get out in us but then i also saw that new the substance movie and that's like one of the craziest movies i've ever seen same with like strange darling that was another good horror movie definitely I can handle the psychological like those i'm not good at the blood and guts that much but i do love that yeah okay. i prefer psychological good story yeah <laughs> Well, guys, you made it through five questions. I'm so excited to have you guys on the show. Uh, Matthew, Steve, let us know if we can find you on social media and uh, where we can find this film that's playing today on uh, Video On Demand. Um, yeah. Oh, uh, so um, I'm sorry. What was the question? I got a little distracted. <laughs> oh, I had a, an email come through. That's right. I, I love post editing. We're good. Uh, <laughs> Tell everyone where they can find the film and uh, streaming, Steve. I mean, Matthew, sorry. Um, so the film can be found on uh, iTunes and Amazon and um, Vudu and uh, Google. Google and um, a, oh my God, a couple of other platforms. Yeah, maybe for pretty much all the VOD platforms. Yes, all the VOD platforms uh, starting October 1st. And you guys on social media, if they want to follow along on your exploits and next uh, career moves here? Yeah, we have actually a joint Instagram account that's uh, Matthew and Steve on, on Instagram. Fantastic. Cody, what about you? Can we follow you on Instagram, my friend? Yeah, my Instagram is just Cody C. Duke. Easy. Well, congratulations on this film. Again, it's called All Kinds of Love. And I appreciate you guys being on the Left of Straight show. Have a very great rest of your time. Stay in the line. For, oh, look at the puppy in the back. I love it. Oh, All that's right, guys. <laughs> Have a great afternoon. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back next time. Because if it's Tuesday, it's time for five questions with. Bye. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Well, if it's Tuesday, guys, it's time for another five questions with right here on the Left of Straight Show podcast. Back with me in studio is the amazing Steve Balderson, fantastic writer, director, producer. He does it all. His new film, Love Venezia, has been playing gangbusters throughout the film circuit festival it's getting ready to be released soon so we're going to keep you opposed on that and if you have not seen our interview check out the link below we had a fantastic talk last week steve welcome back to the left to straight show how are you i'm great thank you for having me back I am so proud to have you back. I had a great conversation. I think you're an amazing filmmaker. You do things just a little different than everyone else, and it makes it just that much more exciting to watch it. So the latest film is fantastic. Are you ready to play a little five questions? Yes. All right. Question number one. We know you're a great director. You kind of have your own little take on things. If you've been given the chance to direct a remake of any classic film, but you must add a surprise twist. Which film would you choose and what would your twist be? North by Northwest, but instead of Cary Grant, it's a woman. <gasps> I love, oh, that's one of my favorite movies. I love that. And in oh, fact, that's... I was going to have, I'm, I have been friends with uh, Jennifer Grant for a long time. I really wanted to do that with her, but it just, we had never have made it happen. Like, I totally want that kind of a movie, but with like a female driven spy. You know, or like an ordinary person who's thrust into that kind of world. Right. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that would be amazing. All right. Question number two. If you can invite three fictional characters to a dinner party in Venice, who would they be and what would be the Italian dish to serve them? I was just gonna start by saying Hercule Poirot. And then when I realized that you said it in Venice, I thought maybe he shouldn't be there because that means there's gonna be a dead body. So <laughs> right. <laughs> so I'll change it to Oh, but now I'm just so that's God, who would it be? Um I wanna know if the Wicked Witch of the West was really as rude as she says. Like maybe she is like it was in Wicked, right? So her <laughs> um uh Oh my God. I didn't realize how difficult this was going to be. Um, <laughs> uh, 
who do I love? Okay, Jodie Foster as Nell. <laughs> Ooh, that's okay. interesting. Okay. Okay, so those two would be just interesting to watch how that went down, that conversation. And, um, oh yeah, why not Hercule Poirot? Because one of them will end up dead, so he'll need to solve that. Whatever. It will be a fantastic <laughs> murder dinner mystery. <laughs> what would you serve? What's one of your favorite dishes from Venice? Well, all their pastas were really great, but my favorite thing that I walked away with from Venice was this idea this like chipotle but it's pasta and it's like handmade noodles and you go and there's like there's like five noodle choices and that's it you know it's like linguine penne whatever it's all homemade every day you can see them doing it right in front of you and you get a topping a meat and you know whatever cheese you want you know whatever sauce you want and there's like five or six options and it's like eight dollars and I it, love that. And it was the best tasting thing ever. And no matter what it was, it, you could order anything there. And it was incredible. There was a, a friend of mine um, brought me to this place. I lived in Portland, Oregon for four years. And this guy came up with a beautiful concept. It was only open from 12 o'clock at night till five in the morning. And all they sold was macaroni and oyster shooters. And it was mac and they did all sorts of different takes of macaroni for like six bucks a plate. And so everyone go there after the bars closed. Amazing. And it was, it was a great way to do it. So I love a good pasta that you can reinvent a bit. All right, question number four. If Love Venezia were a cocktail, what ingredients would it have and what would you name it? It would have Suave, which is the dry white wine that is consumed most readily in the area around the Veneto, with a little bit of Prosecco and maybe a drop of cherry juice. I like it. You are a good, good, good uh, bartender there. <laughs> and what would you call it? Um, the Marco. There you go. Mixologist at heart. I like that. All right. And question number five, Steve, if you had to shoot a short film in just 24 hours with whatever you have in your pockets and within reach right now, what would you do? What would the plot be? Um, a neurotic packing for a trip. <laughs> I like it. I think we know what's going on in Steve's life. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, Steve Balderson, remind everyone about this great new book that you had out in July and this film where they can find both. Accessing Creativity is my new book that is available everywhere books are sold and on Audible, if you prefer the audiobook. Uh, the film Love Venezia will be released worldwide either at the end of this year or the beginning of next. And in the meantime, they can see the trailer on YouTube or learn more about it on my website, stevebalderson.com or dekanga.com. Fantastic. Guys, check out those sites. We also played an interview last week, so check the link below for our entire interview with Steve. We appreciate you tuning in every week because if it's Tuesday, it's time for another Five Questions With. Have a great week, everyone. Stay tuned. we got two more great Left to Straight Show interviews coming up in the next two days. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. All right, guys, if it's Tuesday, it's time for another Five Questions With. Back in studio with me today, the very handsome, the very talented Mr. Mike Azara is here. He has an upcoming movie, Horrified, that uh, is being uh, teased right now. It's down at the um, Scare Fest, I believe it's called, down in Kentucky. We're going to hear all about that. Mike, welcome back, my friend. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. I'm excited. By the time this airs, you should be getting on that jet plane bound to Kentucky. Remind <laughs> everyone when you're going to be down there. Uh, I'll be in Kentucky at Scarefest, October 18th through the 20th. Nice. Well, this is a great new movie. If you missed our interview last week, be sure to check it out below. It talks about this great, fantastic uh, feature film that uh, Mike is not only writing, producing, he is directing for the first time in his feature film. So I'm excited about that. So check the link below, but it's time for a little five questions. Are you ready, my friend? I am. Let's do it. All right. Well, you know, every time I have you on, I have to do something on Major Crimes because my favorite <laughs> show ever. So it's spooky season. If you could bring four characters from Major Crimes into a Halloween whodunit, which four would be your favorite to write for? And what would be a quick plot? Uh, characters? Four, four characters, yes. Um. Let's see. Let's let's do Sharon, Mary McDonald. Let's do Sykes, Kieran Giovanni. 
let's do uh, Andrea Hobbs, who's Kata Mazur, and Rusty, Graham Patrick Martin. Um, and in terms of who done it, ah, oh, man, putting me on the spot. Um, What's funny is when I was working on major crimes before I was staffed as a writer, I wrote <laughs> I wrote a uh, spec um, that nobody saw, but it was just for me. <laughs> but I I I basically killed somebody from a comedy troupe, um, like the Groundlings kind of theater, uh, because it can get com- competitive there. Uh, so maybe that's what the Who Done It would be. I would love that. I'm a good friend with Minnie Sterling. I'll get her in for she was a groundling regular. Oh, yeah. She'd be amazing in there. She's fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. All right. Question number two. Now we talked about this new film. You're not only writing, you're producing it and you're directing it. Mm-hmm. Which one of those hats makes you want to hide under the coverage with a pint of ice cream? <laughs> Um, I would say producing because asking for money is really hard. So give me that haagen <laughs> There you go. We've talked about that. That is always the hardest part for any endeavor. Good answer. Right, question number three, my friend. We've talked in previous interviews about your creative endeavors. You got Ghost Bunny Tees. You got Toy Stories with a Z. <laughs> Let's say you're creating a Ghost Bunny the game. Mm. What would the design of the game board look like? Oh, my goodness. Well, I don't know if it would be. Uh, you made me go to video game. <laughs> um, but uh, in terms of a board game, you know, I think like a spooky Monopoly would be really, really fun. Uh, that would be fun. Yeah. I love that. I love little bunnies. Yay. Um, <laughs> all right. Question number four. All right. So you're getting ready for the big directing debut. You got Horrified coming up. I'm a huge foodie. I love throwing a good uh, dinner party here on Five Questions. Mm. What three directors would you like to invite to dinner to either pick or possibly eat their brains? Oh, my. Wow. That is a really good question. Huh. Hmm. Well, can, can they be not with us anymore? They can be alive or dead, yes. Okay. Um, I would say Wes Craven, number one. He is mm. my hero. Um, somebody who I love who is alive and, and a friend who I just would love to see more is Don Mancini, who created Chucky. Um, and then third, hmm, that's a really, that is a tough one. I'm just going to say the two of them because I don't think you need another director. <laughs> I think that's a good choice. I like that. We can go off I'll script. Be the third. I'm the third. So there, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Fantastic. All righty. Good choice. And just because I'm a foodie, what would you serve? What's, what's your go-to dinner? I mean, somebody else would have to make it, but I love, I love like a good thick steak, um, mashed potatoes. Yeah. I like it. You can find that in Kentucky. It's a nice meat and potatoes kind of town. I like that. All right. And question number five, my friend, you've written a fantastic Christmas horror movie. Who would win in a fight between Pumpkinhead and Santa Claus and how? Oh, Santa Claus. Uh, And it's the holiday magic. Obviously. Obviously. I love it. All right, Mike Zara, you made it through five questions. Thanks so much, guys. Check out our interview. The link is down below. Remind everyone where they can find you on social media and where they can find this great new movie, Horrified, to follow along. And we'll have a link down below for the GoFundMe to help get this movie made, guys. Thank you, Scott. Yes, my Instagram is Zara Stories with a Z. And uh, the movie is at Horrified Movie on Instagram. Fantastic. Guys, we appreciate you tuning in. Mike, stay on the line for me. We are happy to bring you more Five Questions with every Tuesday right here on Left of Straight Podcast. Be sure to stay tuned for the next couple of days. We have a couple of new Left of Straight show interviews with some fantastic, great guests. We'll see you next time, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to our bonus podcast, Five Questions with. Be sure to look for us every Tuesday as we bring back some of your favorite guests from the previous week's interviews and some special best of five questions guests as well. 
If you haven't subscribed yet or hit the like button, tap those buttons now to help other people find Left of Straight podcasts. We appreciate you for listening and look for our interviews with your favorite LGBTQ and straight allies from entertainment, foodies, music, books, and advocacy. We'll see you next week, because if it's Tuesday, it's time for Five Questions with...